Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can store a data set or uh, multiple numbers in a, what's called an array in MATLAB. So let's let's take a look at arrays. And uh, I'll start out by just defining a variable, we'll call it spam, and I'm going to assign it an array. And an array starts and ends with square brackets. And I'm going to give it uh, the, the numbers, the data, separated by commas, that is comma delimited. I'm just going to give it some bogus data here. How about negative 1, pi, MATLAB knows what you mean by pi, uh, 3, how about 4.5, and 0. And outside of the square brackets, I'm going to leave off the semicolon so that this command echoes back to me. Echo, right? There it is, negative 1, 3.14, 159, 3, 4.5, and 0. And now spam is in the workspace, right? And uh, uh, this is the, the symbol, I guess, for an array, the four squares. And then you can see the values being stored in that array. Now, now that spam is in memory, I can access its values using index notation. Notice... If I try to get the, you know, the first number there, and if I try spam of zero, um, actually let me back up to 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 access these with indexes or indices, uh, we use parentheses instead of square brackets. All right, so I'm going to use parentheses here. I'm going to try to get the zeroth uh, element. I hit enter, and right away we see an error here. The indices must be positive or logical values. That's because, and this is very strange, MATLAB starts its indexing at 1. So this is actually index 1. Let's check that out. Yeah, that gives us the negative 1. Uh, this is very strange because most programming languages start at 0. Python, C, for example, start at 0. But MATLAB starts its indexing at 1. So this is index 1, index 2, 3, 4, and 5. So now once you know that, then the rest is straightforward, I think. Spam of 2 gives us the pi, you know, spam of 5 gives us the 0. All right, now if I wanted to uh, slice this thing, I can, I can do that as well. And I can use the colon operator just like I did in Python. So with a open parenthesis, I, I could say something like 1 to 3, like that. And then that slices this thing, gives me a new array, negative 1, 3.14, 1, 6, 3. So it gave me the first three elements. Notice it gave me the uh, the element at the index of, the, of the, the, the last index, right? Python would not include that one, but MATLAB does include it. All right, and I can, um, I can use the, the keyword end, which is, which is really nice. Spam of end is the 0, right? So this is a way of indexing backwards. n minus 1 is the 4.5, right? And I can slice using end. So I can say a spam of 2 to end, like if I want to leave off the first element. So this, this gives me the entire array except for the first element, right? Spam 2 to end. I can also uh, skip by uh, a step, right? I can say a spam of uh, 1 colon 2 colon end. So what this would do is it would start at the first index, 1, and it would skip by 2's, and then it would go to the end. So this returns the negative 1, the 3, and then the 0. It skipped the even um, indexed elements. Right? All right, so that can be pretty useful. Now this, uh, this type of array, see how it's one row and a bunch of different columns, five columns. We call this array a row vector because it's just a single row. We could alternatively make a column vector using semicolons, delimiting our data with semicolons. Um, so I'm going to redefine this thing and inside square brackets I'll put negative one but then I'm going to put a semicolon. Pi, semicolon three, semicolon 4.5, semicolon zero. Hit enter and now I have the same data but in a column vector. And you can index this thing just in the same way, exactly in the same way, actually. Uh, if I do, uh, let's, for example, spam of 1 to 2 to end, what I get, I get the same data, but just arranged differently, right, on top of one another, like that. 
So all of that still works with column vectors as it did with row vectors. So that's really nice. Now, um, the cool thing with MATLAB is when you have like two dimensional arrays. So let's say I have another vector or another array spam. So I'm going to start with the square brackets again. And let's say I have like a three by five data set. So I'm just going to enter in some numbers, but uh, I'm going to enter it row by row. So this is a uh, three col uh, comma, uh, 5.5 maybe, negative three maybe, uh, pi uh, comma six. Okay, so here, here's my first row. If maybe we have five columns, so that would be my first row. And so to, to tell MATLAB that I'm done with the first row, I'm gonna hit a semicolon right there. The rows are delimited by com uh, semicolons, excuse me. Now I'll start with my next row and it has to have five elements in it. So how about five, four, three, two, one. All right, and then I'm going to enter one more row, so I'm going to put a semicolon in there, and then maybe the next row is like all zeros. So I'm going to put five zeros there. It has to have five. Each row has to have the same amount of numbers. All right, I'm going to hit enter, and so you will see now my spam array is this rectangular array. It's three by five. So there we go, it's in memory, and you'll see the value, there are too many values, but it'll say three by five double. The double means these are double precision floats. All right, now, I can uh, access these things using index notation, but it's, it's a little ambiguous at first, like, what do you mean by the second element? Do you mean the five? Do you mean the 5.5? Or do you mean something different? Well, let's, let's try it. Okay, so the second element is five. So that's clearly this one. All right, maybe let's take a look at what the fourth element is. Spam of four is 5.5. .5. All right, so from those previous two commands, you might have a sense as to what MATLAB is doing here. It's counting down the rows. Index one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so on. Like the rows are all stacked on top of one another. So when you tell it four, you know, it goes through the first column, and then it goes to the next column, and it grabs the 5.5. .5. That's called column major order, the fact that the columns are all stacked on top of one another. You can also specify that 5.5 .5 using subscript notation. Um, previously, when you give it one number, that's, that's called linear index notation. Now what we can say is like spam row one comma column two, like that, spam one comma two. That returns the 5.5 .5 as well. So you have two options here. Sometimes it's more useful to give it the linear index notation for the fourth element. Sometimes it's more, uh, you know, uh, it's more convenient to give it the row and the column, which gives us also the 5.5. .5. And uh, you, can, you can assign things in the same way. So let's say I wanted a pi to be here instead of 5.5. .5. I could say spam of 1 comma 2 equals pi. So this assigns pi to spam of 1 comma 2. And so that gives me a pi there now. And everything else stayed the same. All right. Slicing a two-dimensional array is very nice, right? Being able to slice a two-dimensional array is, is great. Um, let's say that I wanted all the odd rows. So I could say 1 colon 2 colon end comma. So remember, this was, uh, the, this was the rows. So I'm saying start at row 1, jump by 2s, and go to the end. So in the case of a three-row array, that would be row 1 and row 3. Then the comma says, okay, now what columns do you want? And let's say I want all the columns, 1 colon end. And that's what we get, right? We get the first row, and we get the third row, and we get all of the columns. Uh, you could you could you could do this in a different way, or you could do this um, you know kind of the the opposite of what we just did. We could get all the rows one to end comma and then the odd columns. Let's say one step by two to the end. Okay, there are all of the rows and the odd columns. 
And you could actually do both, right? We're just working on, we're just playing around here, just trying to test the syntax. You could, you could go, uh, you could get all the odd rows and all of the odd columns, right? So that returns all of the numbers that have both odd number row and odd number column. All right, so that's that's nice that we can slice two dimensionally. Um, I don't know that we were that we did that in Python. It, it's it's not as convenient in Python to, to do that. All right, so finally, I want to point out um, matrix or uh, array or element element excuse me element wise multiplication. Let's say I have spam. All right, there's my spam matrix. And let's say I have another a matrix or another array. You can use the word matrix and array. Uh, you know, you can swap them out if you want synonyms. But uh, let's say I have an array eggs where uh, we have, you know, it's a three by five again. So let's say, um, uh, I'll, just, I'll just write some, something quick here. One, two, three, four, five comma or a semicolon zero one two three four semicolon and maybe negative one negative two negative three negative four negative five okay so there's my eggs matrix or my eggs array notice it's the same size as spam so this will happen quite a bit where you're you're doing some data analysis and you'll have two arrays that are the same size and usually when that happens you want to do some sort of operation involving spam and eggs usually element by element like you want to you want to take this element and do do something like add or subtract or multiply by this element and then you'd want to do the same thing for all the elements element by element so if you wanted to do element-wise multiplication, you do spam dot times eggs. And so what we get here is, again, 3 times 1 is 3, 5 times 0 is 0, 0 times negative 1 is 0, and so on. So we do element by element multiplication. We could do element by element division, spam dot divide eggs, although we're going to run into some problems. You'll see we get infinity there because we're dividing by zero. But otherwise, everything goes through as you might expect. We can do a spam plus eggs. You don't, you don't need the uh, dot in front of the plus. You only need the dot when you do um, multiplication, division, and uh, exponentiation. Like we, we could do spam dot caret eggs. This is an interesting one. This, this takes every element in spam and raises it to the power eggs. And the reason these are infinity down here is because that is doing zero raised, hmm, that's, yeah, zero raised to a negative power. So zero raised to a negative power gives you infinity. One, you know, one over zero, one over zero squared, one over zero cubed, and so on. All right, now there's one last thing I want to mention here, and it's regarding this, uh, this multiplication or division. Um, if you do, if you forget the, the dot and you do, you know, eggs times spam like this, you might get an error. And um, I don't want to go too much into this, but uh, if you if you know linear algebra or you know how to multiply matrices together, matrix multiplication is different than element by element multiplication. And actually, when you do the times symbol like this, you're doing matrix multiplication. In our course, we won't use matrix multiplication. We'll want to multiply element by element. That's why we use the dot times. Uh, in this case, you can't you can't do matrix multiplication. But I don't want to get into that. So just know that you'll always use in our class eggs dot times spam, or you'll use the dot operator when you multiply. You'll use the dot operator when you divide, and you'll use the dot caret when you raise to a power. All right. So I think that covers the basics of the array. Uh, Thank you very much.